Come on. Alright guys. It is another just gray, gloomy, yuck, depressing <coughs> day here in the end times in uh, what's left of the paradise of Garfield, Texas. Here it is Friday morning, April 5th, 2019, and I have got to head back for my second day of hell, heading back to Bank of America to work out this PayPal nightmare. But before I do, I'm doing what I do every Friday, and that's simply bringing my ecological meltdown roundup rant. And before I dive into that, I want to send out a couple of big thank yous. I want to thank Brother John for his kind donation to my GoFundMe account which has not been hacked. And ironically enough, uh, I want to thank Brother Robert Pyle for his latest kind PayPal donation, which I see just came through to uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe. And guys, uh, all I can say for now, I am phasing out, shall we say, the Humpty Dumpty Tribe PayPal account, and I absolutely appreciate anyone who has ever found it in their hearts and wallets to donate to my channels. But if you want to donate donate by PayPal to Humpty Dumpty Tribe and Collapse Chronicles, please send that donation to collapsechronicles at paypal.com. And we're going to hope that account does not get hacked, and I'm setting it where it automatically will go into my bank account and not some hacker's. Uh, so anyway, I do appreciate that, and with that little pleasant piece of business out of the way, uh, I need to put this little dog down, and we're just going to dive into uh, this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant, and, and I noticed Washington Post sent me no email today, Center for Biological Diversity, We've already heard it before, and I have got to get back to my life in hell. So we are going to devote this entire uh, ecological collapse roundup rant to uh, MangaBay.com, who starts around a collapsing planet looking at various ways People are fighting planet eaters. Yes, they start off in Panama, where we see these uh, these indigenous people in Panama uh, getting into it with invading loggers in the Darien Gap. If you're not familiar, the Darien Gap between Panama and Colombia has long been known as an impregnable stretch of rainforest, rivers, and swamps inhabited by indigenous people. Uh, yes, and now today, even the Darien Gap is undergoing steady deforestation as timber colonists and oil palm entrepreneurs advance across the region, bringing strife and violence to the area's indigenous residents. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, from the Darien Gap to <coughs> Bosnia Herzegovina, where these guys over there in Bosnia are going up against some goddamn planet-eating hydropower dam. Residents of a small Bosnian village kept watch day and night for years so that construction vehicles blah 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 and they actually have a what will end up being a temporary restraining order so they are celebrating their victory. Uh, now, of course, uh, my computer has decided to eat uh, Manga Bay's uh, Roundup. Just decided to eat it. 
said, thank you very much for the breakfast. Well, let's see if we can find the Manga Bay Roundup. Thank you, computer, for giving me back my rant. You know, th th this computer, like my truck and everything else in my life, falling apart. So what is the situation in the Balkans? Plans have been laid for nearly 3,000 Three thousand new hydroelectric dams across the Balkans. This is a three hundred percent increase in the past two years. Three thousand. I, I I didn't even know there were three thousand rivers to dam in the Balkan mountains. We are fucked from the Darien Gap to the Balkan Mountains as these motherfucking planet eaters. They, they're, they're pulling out all the stops, guys. They are leaving. This is turning into a scorched earth policy as the, you know, villagers from Panama to uh, Bosnia being attacked it is a full-scale attack on this planet. Let's go down here to uh, Ecuador, where indigenous groups in Ecuador convene to figure out resistance in the Amazon. <coughs> the latest assembly was called in response to an announcement by Ecuador's Ministry of Energy um, about selling off these blocks, blah, these, uh, Jesus, guys, and, and then it's not here, uh, but Amazon Watch, you know, I don't even get into their uh, newsletter, uh, an identical story to what's going on in the Ecuadorian Amazon, going on today in the Peruvian Amazon, as the Peruvian Indians are, uh, are, are, are fighting these guys in the Peruvian Amazon, the Ecuadorian Amazon, the fucking Darien Gap, the Balkan Mountains, the Arctic, our public lands, New Guinea. Uh, good fucking God, people. We're fucked. Where's my sign? Oh, Jesus. Moving along. We're going to pass right over Vietnam. Okay. Here, let's go to the Democratic Republic of the Congo in, uh, in, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. Hmm. Farming communities abused at troubled DRC mega farm. This is the Bukanga Lonzo Agro Industrial Park. Yes. It was conceived as a way to boost mechanized food production in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. But now the park is in shambles. Yes, uh, I bet it is. Uh, I love this. The, the primary investor in the park is currently seeking nearly $20 million in damages from the Congolese government. Anyway, they, you know, they take matters into their own hands over there in the Congo. Uh, you piss off those people uh, with your, your little $20 million agro-industrial park. Oh, yeah. And you, and you think you're going to take over their little pieces of land? You, you'll see what a few damn machetes can do when you rile them up. But, but, but you know, of course, it doesn't matter because the, the, the people wrecking the agro-industrial park uh, are, are, are going to do the same thing, ultimately, to the planet. It's just, it's just going to take a little bit longer for machetes to do what the bulldozers were trying to do in their place. We're, we're, we're completely fucked, guys. All right. <clears throat> I had to get a laugh out of this one. <clears throat> About new solar-powered canoes 
and the, uh, the these Amazon Indians are trying out their new solar powered canoes. <laughs> Anyway, good good for the Amazon Indians. Uh, that paddling does get a little tough after about 300,000 years of it. All right. Okay, as long as we're down there in the Amazon, you will never believe this, guys. You will not believe this. Would you, would, would, can you imagine that the Brazilian soy trade is linked to widespread deforestation and carbon emissions. No shit, Sherlock. This is looking, uh, studying 220,000 square kilometers in the Amazon and the Cerrado biomes, which were deforested. Uh, you know, earlier this <clears throat> decade, and um, you know, looking at the goddamn soil, the soy industry down there, <clears throat> and believe this <clears throat> or not, you heard it here in uh, Manga Bay, clearing native vegetation releases carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases while crop plantations store less CO2, a one-two punch hindering efforts to curb climate change. About 140,000 square kilometers of the Brazilian Cerrado were lost uh, between 2006 and 2017, releasing 210 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions, 210 million tons. Uh, just uh, from that, doesn't even take into account the Amazon. That's the Cerrado. And wow, the majority of Brazil's soy is produced for experts uh, for export. Do you think so? So who's, you know, again, it gets down to whose CO2 emissions are these? Are, are, are they the growers in uh, Brazil? Or is it the consumers of this shit uh, in, in, the, in Europe and the U.S.? that are really the one, you know, it's the same thing with, with, with all of this, the uh, carbon emissions from all of this planet-eating shit that they're making over there in China and in India and in Vietnam. Whose carbon emissions are those? Do you blame them on the factories sending all this shit in the air? Or is it the fault of the American and European consumers buying all of this planet-eating shit. Uh, you know, this is, this is the part of the debate that every one of us doesn't want to talk about. It is our part that every one of us is a cog in this chain. And sure, we all want to put the, the fucking blue meanies out of business. As Ayn Rand was saying in 1957, there is one way to put these soy growers out of business. There's one way to put these polluting factories out of business. It is to stop buying their uh, planet-eating shit such as this broken bullshit detector button, this uh, no shit Sherlock button, this computer. Uh, we're all guilty, and this is the reason we're all fucked. Anyway, let's go over to uh, plastic pollution. This is Manga Bay having an interview with this fellow... Uh, Michael Roscom Abing, uh, a political scientist who reports on the latest scientific research around plastic pollution for the Plastic Soup Foundation. You might not be aware of this, guys. 
that Earth's oceans are drowning in plastic. Humans created 311 million metric tons of the stuff in 2014, and it is expected that humans will be making four times as much plastic by 2050. 311 million times four by 2050, yet only about 5% of plastic is currently recycled. Huh. It has been estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic that goes to waste, the equivalent of a full garbage truck, is it has been estimated that the equivalent of a full garbage truck of plastic is dumped into our oceans every minute of every day of every year as the amount of plastic set to increase fourfold over the next 30 years. And you wonder why we are so fucked. Z, D, D. Here's an article. Are you aware that there is a sloth crisis on the planet? A sloth crisis. You can, you, you can take any animal on the planet and, and put the word crisis after it. This is looking at, at sloths. You know, you, know, the, you know those little guys that hang upside down. Anyway, they're fucked. Oh, Jesus. Here's this article about these invasive species on these islands. Uh, good God. And, uh, but th this is one th that they actually can win uh, little by little. Uh, you know, talking about rats. It's mostly rats and cats. Of course, they don't talk about humans being the most invasive species on the planet. But, uh, you know, anyway, we've heard that one before. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go over to the shithole uh, country of India for the knee slapper of the week. Unfortunately, my bullshit detector button does not... Uh, work. Environmental issues. Environmental issues among top prioritized of urban Indian voters. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. So, I guess clean drinking water and agriculture-related governance issues feature prominently in the Indian voters' list of priorities. High levels of water and air pollution, which have been plaguing Indian cities over the past few years, were not a top priority nationally. No shit, Sherlock. But were... A, of importance to the urban the voters, uh, the urban voters. And then, uh, what are some other voter priorities in India? How about sand and stone quarrying? And I love this one for India, noise pollution. Uh, India, I, I've heard people, I, I will never go to India, but people have been there talking about it. It is the noisiest country on the planet. Okay, from the shithole country of India, where all those people are so concerned, all those voters are so concerned about the environment. Uh huh. Let's go over to, back to the Solomon Islands. What's the latest on that old, on that big oil spill? Uh, the oil has stopped spilling, but environmental toll is still being calculated. Uh, <clears throat> an estimated 88 tons of heavy fuel oil escaped from the ship. 
Uh, yeah, right. <coughs> 88 times my ass. Oh, my we are so fuck sign is flying away. Okay. It looks like crab season. Oh, the Center for Biological Diversity showing up in, uh, <clears throat> in Manga Bay. So this is one of the stories that was in there anyway. So we can take care of it here. Crab season to be cut short in California <coughs> to protect whales and turtles. The settlement between the Center for Biological Diversity in California, blah, 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 will close the California Dungeness crab fishery three months early this year to reduce the chances that whales and other sea life will become entangled in fishing gear. All right. Um, good for that. Anyway, what is the choice that Sarawak Sarawak uh, is facing now. Sarawak can invest in or give away its future. Hmm, do you think so? Uh, yes. Uh, so, y y y you know, what they're talking, well, they're talking about a lot of things. It's like Sarawak or anything else as, as more and more of these people are, are getting more money to spend is, is what they're talking about, is more and more poor people are, are getting uh, more and more money to spend and what's the first thing they do is they're looking for energy. And of course, so they're they're looking at their choices, and they seem to be leaning towards hydropower. As uh, so, you know, when they talk about renewable energy, uh, so they're calling for more how more hydropower to build a prosperous uh, Sarawak. Unfortunately, uh, if hydropower development follows the pattern of earlier dam building, it could accelerate the alarming loss of rivers and their resources. No shit, Sherlock. This is Manga Bay's coverage of this uh, deadly fungal disease that has devastated more than 500 amphibian uh, species. I've already done a full rant. Uh, six and a half percent of all amphibian species are known to either already be gone or on their way out because of this damn fungus. Alright. Well, we have a second uh, knee slapper of the week. Cargill Corporation pledges to stop forest to farmland conversions. But no results yet for the Brazilian Serrato. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Oh, God. Uh, a newly released report shows that not one single company will achieve their unadulterated horseshit 2020 deforestation-free pledges, and recent research questions the effectiveness of such greenwashing commitments. No shit, Sherlock. Well, we do have some good news coming out of Mexico surrounding the vaquita uh, porpoise. Suspected Totaba poachers shot by authorities in Mexico's Sea of Cortez. Uh, so the, the authorities act. 
actually tried to uh, confiscate these fuckers' gill nets, you know, that are killing the last, I think it is six vaquita porpoises, and so I guess a gun battle, uh, a shootout erupted, um, anyway, unfortunately, none of them were killed. All right, you will not believe this either. Dust and blood, climate-induced conflicts, fuels migration. <clears throat> no shit, Sherlock. The Arab Spring was largely political in nature and fueled an exodus of migrants from across the swath of affected countries into Europe. Now, a study published in Global Environmental Change finds evidence that a changing climate was also a factor. The researchers hypothesized that abnormal and extreme climate events worsen conflicts, which in turn lead to migration. No shit, Sherlock. Anyway, guys, uh, I've really, uh, I, I've, I've got to get back to hell, so I'm not even going to get into this latest story on Carl bleaching. Uh, I think I've already been over that one. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, we're, we're, we're fucked. And uh, do as I say, not as I do. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can. And I am, with that, I'm going to come over, change shirts, come over to Collapse Chronicles for a uh, few minutes, and then uh, head to my planet-eating bank uh, to continue this nightmare uh, with PayPal. Wish me luck. Smoke them if you got them. We all know why. Bye, guys.